This was the number one most requested topic on our 2023 customer survey. And I get it, simmering down the overwhelm and having a clear brain to think through what is important, what isn't, and then how do you get there? That is an extremely important skill set, if not the most important as an entrepreneur. It's also something where speed matters. You have to get to the point where you can do it quickly. You can do it on the fly. Whether you're just starting and those muscles are a little bit atrophied because you just aren't used to flexing them, or you've been in business for a while and you've hired a team, this video is for you because I have also made mistakes as I've built out the employees and the organizational structure under me. Even when I have the exact A plus person in the right seat on the bus, I still have to make a lot of the decisions. I can't put the expectation on them to make the exact call that I would every single time. That would be crazy. And yes, I've screwed that up before. That's why in this video, I want to talk to you about how I have cultivated a decision-making mindset, how I figure out what's important and what's not. Let's get to it. And this is a safe space. So go ahead, click that like button if you have ever felt analysis paralysis. There have been days I get to the end of the workday and I tell my husband, I don't wanna decide what's for dinner. I've made decisions all day. I have no decision-making brain cells left in my head. By the way, if we've not yet met, my name is Ashlyn Carter. I'm a conversion copywriter and brand and launch strategist for creative entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. I'm the CEO of Ashland Writes in the Copy Bar. We're a boutique copywriting agency as well as a curriculum resource because not knowing what to say and how to say it shouldn't be the thing holding you back from making sales and crafting a sustainable message. I want to kick things off by telling you the three part matrix, I guess for lack of better words, of what qualifies something as important for me. I know something is important and a decision I have to make when it passes these three green lights. Number one, it is a decision that will either move the business forward or backwards. This is not a static neutral type of decision. This is something that is either gonna accelerate or decelerate us, de-accelerate, whatever that word is. Number two, it's a decision that is gonna affect the cash flow of the business, whether long-term or short-term. That matters because when I'm making decisions, it's a lot of times so easy to get caught up in the weeds and little maybe pain be things that don't matter that much in the scheme of things. And I have to continually set my mind back on, I am running a business here. We have to make a profit, not just an expensive hobby. It's gotta work. So when I know that a decision is something that's going to affect cash flow, it's worth being on my plate because it's important. And number three, this might be a little bit of a spicy take, but if it is not urgent, that is a major clue and red flag to me that bring it on over, I need to corral that on my plate and think about it. And I'm gonna talk about Eisenhower's matrix in a minute, but those things that are urgent, they usually kind of get done anyway. Whether somebody on the team is doing them or I just make time in my schedule for it because it's due or it's a big deadline, but it's those things that aren't urgent that, oh, those are the ones that'll get you. They're tricky, tricky. Now you know how I pick what's important. These next seven things are gonna be more strategies of how I choose what to do. First up, let's talk about the Eisenhower matrix. Good old President Ike. He developed this matrix to help explain decision-making. Essentially, it's the hypothesis that if you've got a grid, the things that are most important and also not urgent are gonna be in one category. And those are the things that probably need to be set aside in your calendar. Think about this being things like exercising, loving on your family, taking care of yourself, developing your faith, the things that are bedrock pillars in your life or in your business that have to get tended to for the rest of the stuff to even work. It probably merits being said, but if something falls into the not important and not urgent box, then it's honestly worth getting off your plate altogether, delegating it, eliminating it, and obviously those things that are urgent need to get done. But the first thing I do when I've got something on my plate is I try to see where does this go in the matrix? Is this something that is important and because it's not urgent, that's a, like I said, a, that's a red flag to me. This is something that if I don't develop a strategic plan of attack to attack, it's never gonna get done. It's just gonna sit there. That's one tool that I use constantly. If it helps to just draw an Eisenhower matrix on your paper, I drew one the other day in the back of my planner when I was trying to figure out something, that helps me immensely. The next tip that's helped me out comes from Warren Buffett. It's sometimes referred to as the 25 by five rule. I'll link below, there's an old ink article that talks through the whole thing, but Warren Buffett told somebody, write down your top 25 goals, then circle the top five. Reportedly, what he said is, okay, now you make a beeline after those five goals, and then goals six through 25, all the rest of them, 
ignore them. Completely put them out of your mind and ignore them until those five goals are done. This anecdote, whether it's true or not, is so helpful for me. I see this with a lot of our members inside the Copy Bar Collective. You have great goals, you have great ideas. Not to say that they shouldn't all be done, but by chasing all the rabbits, you're catching none, or whatever that Chinese proverb is. And you've got to trim down the list to a few things, and until those things get checked off, do not worry about the other stuff. Squirrel brain, if that affects you like it does affect me, this is really helpful. Some of you know I talk about it a lot. I'm a big fan of power sheets, but what I have found in this top section, when I have my goals for the month, I usually can only focus on one to two at a time, and it's easier for me instead of worrying about getting them all done in a month, I just think like go hard, get this one done, move it. Go hard after the next one, get that one done, move it off. The next tip is a little learning I gleaned from Peter Drucker's book, The Effective Executive. It is an old school classic about leadership and business. And in it, he talks about when you sit down, think about what are the two most productive things that I can do for the enterprise, and that's what I'm gonna do today. What I love is this flies in the face of all of the big three concepts out there. And in a recent video, I talked about why I am more of a big two person than a big three. I still set a big three for my week, like the big projects that have to get done, whatever goal, again, to reference the power sheets that I'm going after. But that is so helpful. When you sit down at your desk in the morning, you already know what projects you're working on. Think about what are the two big things that are important for the whole enterprise for me to do today. The next tactic that I employ is looking at my goals every day, if not every day, at least multiple times during the week. I create annual goals. I've done videos about this. My tool of choice has been power sheets for years and on that list I make only goals for one quarter. I have a vision of what the year is going to look like, but as far as the smart goals and making it measurable. I only do that for a quarter at a time. So every day when I sit down, I'm looking at what those goals are, but, and here's the key, part of being an entrepreneur is looking at those goals, but also holding them with loose enough hands that if things need to fall through the cracks, you need to shift, you need to move, you need to pivot, you are not so bought into those goals that you can't pivot or be opened up to creative ideas about changing them. That's really important. So it's about balancing those goals with your hand on the financial levers of the business and being attuned to them at the same time. The next thing I am always thinking is that my calendar, your calendar too, it is a zero sum game. If something's slotting in, something has to bounce out. You cannot do all of the things. You've heard quips about this, like if something isn't a heck yes, then it's not a yes. This is another one of those like blanket mentalities that I bring into every single day. If something's slotting on my calendar, something is always slotting off, always. No ands, ifs, buts. This strategy or mindset is helpful because you have to get good at balancing the rubber balls and the glass balls and knowing when the rubber ones can drop because they'll bounce, they'll be fine, and which ones are actually glass and need to be protected at all costs. You will guess wrong. You will have glass balls that drop and shatter. You will hang on to rubber balls that you will learn later you could have let go of a long time ago. You'll develop a nose for this. At least that's what I've found. I've gotten better at it in time as a business owner. I hope I keep getting better at it. Next tip, give things a numerical weight on your calendar. I'll show you a little over the shoulder, but I always, write down, is it a level three important or is it just level one? And that usually helps me siphon through my task for the day besides the big goals that I have to get done that I've talked about and figure out, okay, what do I need to do and what's not that important? Last tip, always, always capture an idea or a task to put it somewhere. Inside the Art of Efficiency, look down below, you can get on the wait list. I map out where I put different ideas, but having a system to tell your brain, great idea, brain, not now, now is not the time for that. We're gonna put that over here. That is a wonderful thing. Like have that mantra on repeat in your head. That's a great idea, it's not right now. Okay, let me wrap up with four mistakes you may be making. Number one, you keep going when you can stop. I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you are reading a book and it's not going great, you don't like it, you can quit the book. I know that's hard, I'm type A, but if you make a decision and you are not 
it's not driving, you think you made the wrong one, then reverse course. You are not subpoenaed to only do that thing. You're in charge, you're the boss. Number two, I said it, I'm gonna say it again. You pick too many goals, you're chasing too many rabbits instead of just trying to go after one or two at a time. I amaze myself at how many goals I can actually get done in a quarter or a calendar year. It's probably less than you think. Another mistake, you are procrastinating out of fear and you're not calling it on the carpet for what it is, fear, get over it. Do it anyway, do it scared. And lastly, you don't set realistic expectations. I've got a video coming up in a couple of weeks where I'm talking about my time blocking system. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Go make those decisions. You can do it. Cultivate that decision-making mindset. Hop on that wait list for the Art of Efficiency. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.